We've just entered into a new year. And what's the first thing you see from Games Workshop social media? New year, new army. But you know what? We're going to change that mantra up this year. New year, new board. That's right. This year, we're going to take you guys down into the underhive. And we're going to create an entire Necromunda Zone Mortalis gaming board. So let's jump straight down to the painting table and let's get this project started. So here we are. We've got our plastic Zone Mortalis tile from Games Workshop. These really are a great sculpt. They've got beautiful detail. They've got little to no clean up straight out of the box. You get four of these in the box, makes two foot by two foot worth of gaming table. So you can pull it straight out, undercoat it like I have in Chaos Black, and we can get started straight away. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get Lead Belcher out, and we're going to start running around all that metal looking detail around the edges of each square so anything you believe is metal so that's like i said the trims around the squares you've got the the bars with the little sort of three pins that lock in your zone mortalis walls you've got those round four round vents on there hit all them you'll you've got another couple of little pipes and open panels and things like that sitting in the floors Whatever you think is metal, hit it now with your lead belcher. Now, if you live somewhere where you've got access to lead belcher and you can just undercoat your tile in that, go for it and skip straight to this step. What we're going to do now is we're going to bring some Doom Bull Brown in and we're going to be very selective with where we put this. So as you can see up in this top corner here, I'm just picking some small patches or small areas that I want to represent some rust. So we can go ahead now, just wherever you feel that the rust should settle, go ahead and paint that in with your Doom Bull Brown now. So I've laid out my basic shapes for my Doom Bull Brown here, and I'm bringing my stippling brush across. I'm still working in that Doom Bull Brown at the moment, and all I'm doing is lightly stippling and feathering these edges out so as you can see i'm just taking the edges especially where it meets the metal don't worry so much about the squares at the moment we're going to do something else with them a bit later but for now just just feather out those edges try and get a a bit of a a blend out to that lead belcher that we applied in that first step or used for our undercoat if you're lucky enough So we're still working with our Doom Bull Brown at the moment and I want to strengthen that rust colour up. We've got one coat on there. This is essentially going to be like applying a second coat. We're just going to very, very, very quickly just flood it into the middle. We still want to keep a little bit of that patchiness, but towards the middle, we want it to be really solid and a good foundation for our rust. So what we'll do, just to get that patchiness back, we'll, we'll take a bit of paint from that middle and just blend it out a little bit further than our last stipple. This is just going to really help smooth your transitions down between your lead belcher and your Doom Bull Brown for the rust. This really is a vital step of getting a, a really smooth transition. I can't emphasize that enough. So now we've gotten our really good base coat down for our rust patches. We're actually going to go through and stipple them with Scrag Brown and Troll Slayer Orange. I'm not going to go through this in depth here. I've already done a video on it on the channel before. I'm going to link that in the description below if you really want to know how I did my rust. So once we've got this step done, we'll move on to the next step, which is... Hazard Stripes, that's right, they are iconic on Necromunda, they are iconic in the 41st millennium, and they are iconic during the Horus Heresy as well. So we're going to pick a few sections here, I'm going to go for a couple of tile edges, I'm going to go for a couple of areas where I'm going to infill the whole tile, I'm going to go for some, some smaller panels. 
but I'm not going to show you the whole process here because I've already done that in my Zone Mortalis basing video. I'll chuck a link to that below, which shows the best and easiest way to do hazard stripes. So now that we've finished our rust and our hazard stripes, as you can see, it looks great and it's starting to break up the board. But we need to start filling in these squares now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use Death Guard Green. And I'm going to start with these big open squares and just start filling it in. I'm going to apply my first coat in one direction. And then for my subsequent coats, I'm going to go the opposite direction, sort of like a cross hatch. That way it just allows for the paint to, to collect better on there. Um, the minor little ridges you get in paint, if you go across it, it will allow the brush to then leave a bit more paint behind, giving you a, a little bit faster and more even coverage. Death Guard Green is notoriously bad for coverage. I had to give it three coats over that black undercoat. But other options you could use are Mechanicus Standard Grey, Rackarth Flesh. You could even leave them just Lead Belcher if you wanted and they would look fine. So if you decide to follow this step, great. If not, you could skip this one and move to the next step. With our Death Guard Green now done, it's looking great. But I want to add a little bit more pop to it. So I've got three colours here. I'm going to start with Balthazar Gold. And there's just a little sort of Mechanicus looking ID plate towards the centre of this tile. I'm just going to give that two good coats just to, just to break up that colour a little bit and introduce a little bit more interest to this piece. With our Balthazar Gold now done, I'm going to grab the Mechanicus Standard Grey. And as you can see, off towards one of the edges, there's actually a hatch. It's got sort of a, a stepped rim around it with just a flat panel in the middle. And I'm just going to do that flat panel in Mechanicus Standard Grey just to, again, create a bit of interest in the board, make it not look so plain. Finally, I'm going to grab that Mephiston Red and just in one of the corner panels, there is just, again, it's like, it almost looks like a dog tag. So I'm just going to do that in red, just to create a bit of interest again, break it up a little bit more. That way, if you want to, you can go ahead and make it look like there's been writing on it. I'm going to, I'm going to treat mine like there's, there's no writing on it. It hasn't hasn't had writing on it for a long period of time because I'm going to weather this up in the next step. So I had a look at my board and I feel like it needs to be broken up a bit more. So I've made a simple stencil out of painter's masking tape and I've grabbed some Rackarth flesh on my stippling brush and I'm just going to stipple it into that area of the stencil just to, you know, break it up, create a little bit more interest in there as well. The beautiful thing about doing it this way, you can simply just lift that tape and move it somewhere else, even turn it in a different direction and reuse it. It's quite quick and easy to do. So I'm going to go do this in a couple of areas now and we'll shoot back with the very first of our weathering. All right, this is where we're going to start really having some fun with this. And we're actually going to start bringing our board to life now. So we need a couple of things here. First things first, we'll grab some Agrax Earthshade and we'll chuck that in our wash palette. Here I've got about 10 brush loads of Agrax Earthshade and I'm just going to bring two brush loads of water in. Make sure you grab some paper towel on hand because we're actually going to use this to create an effect. So what I would like to do is start right in the middle. On a piece like this, especially where you can turn it, it's a big piece, it's not like holding a miniature. We really need to start in the middle and work our way out because the edges are always going to be easier to reach. So grab a heap of that known oil, throw it down on there, really quickly just brush it over the whole surface. It doesn't matter what it looks like at this point. Because it's in this next step that we're about to do where the effect starts coming to life. 
So really quickly, just get it on there, get it on there. Just keep keep chucking it on there. If it pulls, it pulls, it doesn't matter. Just chuck it in there. Work as quick as you can. The quicker you work with this, the better the effect will be. So there you go, there's there's our four tiles now belted in with, with our Agrax Earthshade. I'm just spreading it out, making sure I haven't got any any sort of major gaps in it there. We've done four, try and keep it to four at a time. Grab your paper towel now, and all we're going to do, we're going to sort of fold it up and then just half roll it. And use a couple of fingers behind it to just press on top of it. Now... You may need to do a couple of passes of this. It's it's not necessarily a one coat system, but it's also not necessarily a two coat system. As the paper towel builds up with more of the Agrax Earthshade, you'll find the effect will change and become heavier in some spots, making some of those starting areas look a bit lighter. But that's okay. We're not going to apply more Agrax Earthshade by brush. We're actually going to just use that paper towel again to just spread it back over those areas that we started off with. So go ahead now and do a few more four or five, six more squares at a time and keep following that process. And the more you do it, the more you will see exactly what I mean. So everyone goes on about, you know, null oil and Agrax Urshade being being two of the core paints from Citadel, but I, I think this one is the most core paint when it comes to creating terrain, weathering models, and that's Scrag Brown. So what I've done here, I've grabbed three brush loads of Scrag Brown out, and I've now grabbed 21 brush loads of water. So in simple terms, I've mixed it up in a seven to one ratio with water so seven parts water one part paint we're essentially creating a wash this will suspend the pigments into that water but it won't cover like a paint it, it won't act like a wash and it won't cover like a paint so we're going to use this like a wash and just start going around all the edges we're going to go right around all the details and texture on this as the brush starts to release you'll find it will become thinner and easier to control as you reload your brush you'll find it'll be harder to control because there'll be a lot of paint on there and this will really vary the effect and create a natural look to your piece of terrain so as you can see, I'm just focusing on these areas. I'm, I'm starting off where I started that wash. By the time you've done this whole tile, you can pretty well go back to the start and start this next step. It doesn't matter too much if there's a little bit of dampness to your Agrax Earthshade at this point. So just take it round. And then what we're going to do here too, we're going to feather it out where our rust is create sort of a, a blooming pattern around our rust and we can bring our paper towel back in it's just the same piece that had the agrax urshade on it and we're just going to very quickly and lightly give it a couple of dabs just to take the harshness away from it that way it looks like the rust has been forming for a while and sort of seeped out onto that tile again it doesn't matter if that Agrax Urshade is still a bit soft, is slightly wet. We don't want it to be super wet, but it can still be a bit slightly wet. And it's not going to change the effect here. It's all just going to add to and enhance the effect that we are going for. At the end of the day, it's your world. So let's create it the way you envision it. So as you can see, we've really enhanced the effect on that, that tile. But we're not done yet. We've just got one final step to go. We've got a new piece of uh, our paper towel here because we're actually going to take some Stormhost Silver and give this tile 
a light dry brush. Now, we're not going to hit absolutely everywhere. We're just going to look for some super raised details, maybe some areas that are a bit more traffic than others, around the hazard stripes, for example, where, where the paint would have worn off and revealed the metal underneath. Around our, our four outer vents, we'll just give it a quick, really quick couple of flicks over our our metal trim on our, our tiles there, our squares. And just pick out some details. We don't want to be heavy handed with this. It is very, very light. As you can see, I've, I've given it one load up of the brush and already gone a fair way with this paint. We just want to pick up a few details just to create a little bit of interest here and there. Once this is done, because it is a playing surface, we really have to ensure that to lock all that paint in, we're giving it a varnish. So I've grabbed some testers dull coat and run outside once it's all dry. And I've just given it a quick spray with a matte varnish. It doesn't matter what varnish you use, but make sure that you put that on there to protect your gaming surface. As you can see, we've only done one 12 inch square tile. So we've still got a long way to go to hit a full three foot by three foot square board. But we've all got to start somewhere. And that's what this project is. It's small increments through the year to make sure we hit that end goal right at the end of the year. So what we're going to do, we're going to come back and work on this at a later date. We've got a great foundation that really helps us get those tiles painted. It's fairly quick and easy to do, especially for the size and the detail that we've put into it. We'll let, let this project sit for a couple of weeks. We'll come back over the next week and two, do another character model paint up something else from a different army. We'll, we'll just get some of our normal painting content out. Two to three weeks time, we'll come back and we'll actually start doing some terrain to sit on this tile. Then what we could do after that, we can get the rest of our tiles painted up and start creating other terrain that we can use in that underhive sector. You know, you've got your sector mechanicus, you've got your zone mortalis, so there's plenty to choose from. But for right now, if you can do this and get this going, you're going to have a great foundation for your Necromunda games. You're going to have a great foundation for your Horus Heresy Zone Mortalis games as well. So stay tuned. Next week we'll be back, like I said, with another model painting video rather than terrain painting video. So get your brushes, wash them off, pull your tiles out, and we will see you all next week. Have a good one.